It's a clay layer that it can't get past and it oozes out and it gives you this moist bit here. You can see the lichen and mosses. And there's tree roots here that tell you that in the past there's been a lot more water here. The Anasazi became masters at exploiting every possible source of water. But then, just before 1300 AD, the people here deserted the region. So why did they leave these beautiful homes? Well, that's the great mystery. Whatever the reason, their departure wasn't just abrupt, it was final. They never occupied these buildings again. Scientists have analysed tree rings and uncovered evidence of a sudden change in climate. And it seems that it was this that overwhelmed the Anasazi. Because in the late 13th century, rainfall in the region dropped sharply. They had survived drought in the past, but this time was different. As the rains failed and there was competition for resources, the whole fabric of the community disintegrated. And the result was conflict. Excavations have revealed that village fought village in a brutal and bloody struggle for survival. With their society in turmoil, the Anasazi fled. In just over 20 years, the region was completely deserted. You know, it's tempting to think that what happened here has no relevance to us living today. But I think that there's a universal story here. The Anasazi were an ingenious, sophisticated people. They hung on in this landscape for nearly 700 years. The point here is that when climate change is really rapid, the results can be brutal. So could a similar fate befall us today? If you head west to the city of Las Vegas, the answer appears to be a resounding no. Here is a city built in the middle of a desert, but full of water. A triumph of technology. Coming to Vegas, you can't help but be seduced by the feeling that our technological brilliance will enable us to cope with the effects of global warming. Vegas owes its existence to one of the greatest feats of engineering in the world. The Hoover Dam. Built in the 1930s, the Hoover Dam tamed the mighty Colorado River. Symbolizes man's conquest of the air, so does Boulder Dam symbolize man's determination to harness nature through this eighth wonder of the world, America's monument to progress. At the time, it was the world's largest concrete structure, creating a lake a hundred miles long. Lake Mead. Proof of its success is easy to see. This is the eighth year of a major drought. The level of the water has fallen, which you can see thanks to the bathtub ring of pale rock around the lake, but the water's still flowing. The possibility that technology could prove inadequate here in one of the most sophisticated nations on Earth seems unimaginable. But now the Hoover Dam faces a new challenge one over and above the natural variability that it's coped with so well, man-made climate change. Some scientists believe that the current eight-year drought is just the beginning, that global warming and a rising population 
mean water will become ever scarcer. The question is, will the lake be able to cope? I'm here to meet one man who's done a detailed study of what the future might hold for the people who live here, Dr. Tim Barnett. So what's the uh, prognosis for the lake and the dam? If nothing's done, if we continue business as usual, there's a 50-50 chance that the uh, Lake Mead becomes ineffective in about 2021, the early 2020s. Uh, even sooner, uh, the power intakes for the hydroelectric power generation go dry, and that goes out of commission perhaps as little as 10 years from now. Again, with odds 50-50. It's quite a frightening scenario. Uh, I think the human beings in this part of the world don't understand what the word sustainability means. I mean, we could easily be right at the edge of uh, civilization, a sustainable civilization in the Southwest. That means not just Vegas is at risk. Many other cities built in the desert are under threat, from San Diego to Los Angeles. Predicting the future climate might be one of science's most complex challenges, but uncertainty over the detail isn't a reason for inaction especially when there's a 50-50 chance that the water supply to 20 million people could fail. And that's even without a sudden acceleration in warming. I think virtually everybody I know in the business that's had a look at real data and look at models is surprised that what the models say seems to be happening sooner than they project. It's a really a nagging worry that there's something we've missed or somehow we're underestimating the speed at which this thing's going to go down. Phenomenal feat of engineering as the Hoover Dam is, exuberant and confident as life in this region is, what strikes me now is the fragility. Even the richest societies will struggle to insulate themselves against the effects of global warming, especially if that change is big and fast. Which brings me back to where I started the series, wondering what global warming means for me and my family, and what sacrifices we should make to prevent it. Can you see the sea yet? No. Yeah. I'm not sure the kids have fully grasped the significance of it all just yet. Dad, you refuse to let me put up that sticker saying stuff global warming. They wanted to put it on the blue car. For the kids, global warming is something they can still have a laugh about. They're always teasing me I take things too seriously anyway. I think I've fit, really. <laughs> it's too small for me. But I'm taking my cue from the scientists who study global warming. You know, I was thinking it would have been lovely to have made a programme about how science had got it all wrong. That actually we've got nothing to worry about. But unfortunately it's the opposite. Most of the climate scientists I talk to are actually genuinely scared by the future. They're worried that it's in the nature of the climate to change far faster than we once thought possible. And my feeling is, if they're scared, so should we be. Because whatever the uncertainties surrounding climate prediction, the fundamental science is pretty clear. We may not know exactly what global warming will bring, but we sure as hell know it's happening. There's just no hiding place from that simple fact. Of course, what it means for us and our families, well, that's a different matter. But if I've learned one thing in this series, it's that the stakes are so high, doing nothing simply isn't an option. Science has discovered the dangers of global warming. Now it's up to all of us, individuals, companies, governments, to decide what action to take. After all, it's our own future at stake. An incredible animal journey over on BBC4 now, continuing whale night. Next year on BBC2, it's Premier League football with today's highlights in Match of the Day 2.